I'm Don Bosco Durai. I'm the co-founder and CTO for Private Sera. Uh, very recently, we open sourced our solution for safety and security for Genia and an AI agent. Um, I'm also the creator and PMC member of the open source project Apache Ranger. Uh, it does uh, data governance for big data. It's also used by most of the uh, cloud providers like AWS, GCP, as well as uh, Azure. Uh, so today I'll be mostly talking about how you can build a safe and reliable AI agent. So before I get started, let's get some of the terminologies uh, uh, standardized. Um, from my perspective, AI agents are autonomous systems. Uh, they can do their own reasoning. They can come with their own workflow. And they can uh, call tasks for doing some actions. And they can use tools to get um, make API calls. So tasks are more specific actions. Uh, they may be able to use LLMs, or they may uh, also call rags or uh, tools. While tools are functions which can be used to get data from the internet. Uh, if you have databases, it can go and get data from the database. If you have uh, service APIs, it can call those things also. And memories are contexts which are shared between the uh, agents, the task, and the tools. To give a visual representation, um, there could be multiple agents, and an agent may have access to multiple tasks, and there could be multiple tools, and as these tools can talk with APIs and DBs. So one thing that you need to know out here is um, most of the, the uh, agent framework today, they are run as a single process. What that really means is the agent, the task, the tools, they are in the same process, that means if the tool needs access to database, that means it needs need to have the credentials. Uh, if they want to make API calls, it needs shared tokens. So those credentials are generally uh, service user credentials. That means they are, have super admin privileges. And since they're all in the same process, uh, one tool can technically access some other credentials which is in the same process. Similarly, <clears throat> if you have tasks or agents which has uh, prompts, all the things that's running within the process, any third-party library, they can also access it. So those sort of makes this entire environment a little bit unsecure. Right? So there's a little bit of a zero trust uh, issue out here. Uh, the agents, the tasks, uh, they talk to LLMs. But if you don't have a secure LLM, then that is another <coughs> area where these things can get exploited. Um, if you take agent on its own, by definition, it's autonomous. That means it will call their own, uh, make, make up their own workflow depending upon the task. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so that actually brings in another set of challenges which we call in the security is unknown, unknown. So you really don't know like, what the agent is going to do. So it's very non-deterministic. So because of this, the attack vectors in a typical agent is pretty high considering from some of the traditional software. So what are the challenges because of this? So there are multiple challenges. So if you look from the security perspective, if the agent is not designed or implemented properly, that can lead to unauthorized access, uh, also data leakages of your sensitive information, uh, confidential information. Right? Safety trust is also another biggest challenge. Uh, if you are using models which are not reliable, or if your environment is not safe enough, if someone goes and changes the prompts, that can also give you wrong results. Compliance and governance is an interesting thing. Most of us are so much busy even just getting the agents working, we are not even worried about a lot of the other things that are necessary for making your agent enterprise ready. So interestingly, I was just talking to one of our customers this Tuesday. They're one of the top three um, credit bureau. So they've built a lot of agents, but their biggest challenge right now is to take it to production. For them, they consider an AI agent as similar as to a human user. And when they onboard a human user, they go through a training, and they have a lot of regulations they need to adhere to. Right? They have data from California residents, so they have to make sure anyone who is accessing uh, California resident data, they should not be using for, if the user is not given consent, they should not be using for marketing purpose. They have international. So if they are Europe data, so who can access the data? There's regulations around it. And also there are a lot of regional regulations. So when they consider even an AI agent 
similar to a human. So they have an onboarding process, they have a training process, and they want to make sure the agents are also following the regulations, right? So without that, they can't go into production. And we as AI engineers, we're still in the early stage. So this is one of the things which is out of our radar right now. So now how do we really address this thing, right? So those who are in security, uh, associated with security or compliance, there's no silver bullet. Uh, the best way is to do have a multiple layers of solutions. So these are some of the things that I have in my mind. Like So you can split it into three different uh, layers. The first layer is, what is the criteria to even put your agent into production? Right? What do you need to do? Right? Uh, we talk about evals, but most of them, we're only talking about evals for how good your model is, how good your response is, it is alternating. But you also need to have evals which are more security and safety focused. So we'll go through some of those things, but the, the goal of this eval out here is to come with a risk score. And depending upon the risk score, you can decide whether you can even promote this agent to the production. And the agent may not be necessarily you are writing it. It could be a third party agent. So it has to go to the same criteria. The second is enforcement. Uh, eval generally tells you how good is your agent built. And enforcement is the one who's actually doing the enforcement or implementation. So you have to make sure you have a pretty strong implementation. If your implementation is not good, your eval is going to fail. Essentially, you can't go to production. And third is observability. Uh, particularly in the uh, world of agents, it's a lot more important because there's so many variables involved out here like you cannot really catch all of them during development or initial testing. So you have to keep track of how it, how it is used in real world and how you can react on it. So I'll go through some of those things in a little bit more detail. So uh, let's start with the evals itself. Right? Um, if you look into traditional software development, uh, there is already a process. There, is, there are gating factors that tells you how you can promote your application into production. Right? So if you start with basic things like uh, when you're writing your code, you have to make sure you have the right test coverage. Right? When, if you're building uh, Docker containers, you have to do the vulnerability scanning. If you're using third-party software, you need to make sure you're, you're scanning for CVEs. If you find high or medium risk or critical risk, you try to remediate that before you can go into production. Right? Uh, you do pen testing, so make sure there's no cross-site uh, scripting and other um, vulnerabilities. The same thing applies for AI agents also. Right? You need to come with the right use cases. You need to make sure you have the, the right ground truth so that when you are doing any changes, you're changing the prompt or you are uh, bringing a new library or new framework or new LLM, you want to make sure your baseline doesn't change. Right? Uh, if you're using third-party LLMs, make sure they are uh, not poisoned. They, are, uh, they have been also scanned for vulnerability. Uh, if you're using third-party libraries, which almost everyone is using it, Make sure they also meet your minimum criteria for vulnerability. Right? And similarly to pen testing, uh, you should also do testing for your prompt injection. Make sure you are, um, your, your application has the right controls so it can block them. And most of the LLMs are already doing it, but not necessarily all of the LLMs are doing it. The other uh, eval is about on, on data leakage. Uh, this also is pretty important, particularly in the enterprise world, because when you're building enterprises, you're building agents which does generally what a human would do, right? If you're building an agent for HR, I have certain functionality. If I am an employee, I can request for, um, uh, to get my uh, salary benefits. But I can't do the same, I can't get for someone else. But if I'm HR admin, there's a possibility I may be able to access someone else's salary benefit. And how do you make sure your agent is not leaking data? There's no malicious user who can exploit some of the loopholes you have. So you'd have to do this evals upfront before you, even you can put your agents in the production. Uh, similar to data leakage is unauthorized actions. Um, most of the agents, even though uh, are read only, there are also now agents coming which are trying to change things. They'll, they'll do some actions. How do you make sure those are also done by the right person, with the right persona? 
And runaway agents, um, uh, those who are, uh, work on agents already know, like the agents can go in a tight loop and for various different reasons. It could be a bad user prompt or just the prompt for the task or the agents are not, cannot address those things. So you have to make sure you test for such scenarios before you put your agent into production. So the goal of this is to come with the risk score at the end of the day so that it gives a confidence that can you put this into production. And the next one is gonna be around enforcement. As I said, your risk score is gonna be depending on how good is enforcement. <clears throat> and particularly in agents, um, you're working in almost like a zero trust environment right? because you have libraries which can access anything, right? Uh, if you are accessing certain of your backend systems which have sensitive data, how do you make sure the wrong user is not accessing it? So uh, from the security control, there are a lot of other things which I'm not gonna to talk today like uh, detecting problem injections and moderation, but focusing on enterprise level thing, uh, you have to make sure you have the right authentication authorization. Uh, this is pretty important because when you look at the environment, when a user makes a request to the agent, it goes to a task and eventually goes to tools and makes an API call to a, a service or a database. If you don't have a right authentication, someone can impersonate someone else and may be able to steal confidential or sensitive information. And the second is the authorization. If you have the authentication done properly, then you have to make sure the access control is applied properly. And this is also important because Agents have their own roles, and as an agent, they can do certain things, so you have to make sure they are not going beyond what they're supposed to. And at the same time, if you have agents which are trying to do something behalf of another user, then you have to make sure the, the user, the, that person's role is enforced. So if you're accessing the database, you shouldn't access anything which the user does not have permission to are making API calls. So, so that's why authentication and authorization are super important. Without that, um, obviously there could be a lot of other issues. Approvals is interesting because um, in the traditional world, we already have workflows. Uh, if I request for a, a leave, my manager will approve it. It's already built into the system. But in the case of agents, you don't need to have a human all the time. You, your agents can do most of the things automatically, right? So, a, if you do it, design it properly, you could have another agent which all it does is just uh, uh, looks for approvals and making sure the results are right. And you can also put thresholds, how much this agent can approve automatically. And you can put the proper guardrails to make sure if it goes above a certain uh, limit, it can automatically get a human in the loop. So uh, just to reiterate this one, <coughs> because it's pretty important, is when it comes to authentication authorization, it's not just about doing the authentication at the point of entry, at the, where you're making a request. It, you have to make sure the user identity is propagated across everywhere. If you're making a calling a task, or the task is calling a tool, you have to make sure the user identity is passed on to the, the, to the last point where it's actually making a data access or making API calls. And that point, you have to make sure you're able to enforce the right policies and access control. And the third is um, observability. <clears throat> so observability is pretty important in the agent world because, as I mentioned, the traditional software, once you build it, it generally just works. Uh, you just have to make sure it is, uh, there's no uh, new vulnerabilities coming in because of some library update or something like that. But in the world of agents, uh, there are many different variables involved. One is the models change very rapidly. Uh, you are, if you're using an agent framework, that is also keep evolving, right? You're using third-party library, that may be start behaving differently. Um, the another important thing in an agent is, is very subjective to what the user is entering. Like you may have tested with a certain assumption, mostly sunny day scenario, or oh, I want to apply for a, my leave. But the end user may use entire different um, uh, um, text to ask the same question. So how do your model is going to behave? Best? So you have to keep monitoring to see if the user inputs or anything that changes, how the responses are coming in. And also to make sure how much PI data and other confidential data has been sent out, because if you see some anomaly, you have to be able to ready to yeah, act upon it. 
Um, the other thing is obviously you can't monitor each and every request. Right? As the number of requests increases, it's just not possible. So you have to start uh, putting, uh, defining thresholds and metrics. So what that really means is, uh, uh, can start calculating, uh, uh, counting how many failure rates are out there. Once you know you have a certain failure rate which is within your uh, tolerance is fine, but it, if it goes above that, you can automatically create an alert and look into it. And the failure rates could be because of uh, misbehaving agent, or it could be a malicious user trying to um, um, compromise the system. Then anomaly detection and, and is another interesting thing. Uh, I don't think we are anywhere close to it yet, uh, but this is very common in uh, the regular traditional software in the security side. There will be always something like user behavior analytics where they look at the user and see whether they are within the uh, uh, um, standard operating thing. With agents coming in, so there'll be more and more of anomaly detection where the agent is behaving within the uh, accepted boundaries. And all those things will end up with the security posture, so that'll give you a near real time saying how good your agent is actually performing in life. Right? So that gives you to a bit of a confidence. So to recap, uh, as I said, there are three things. One is preemptive. Have a vulnerability uh, eval to make sure that you get a right risk score, which gives you the confidence whether you can promote the uh, um, agent to production of your agent, third party agent, whether you can use it in your environment. Um, second is proactive enforcement. Uh, make sure you have the right uh, guardrails, you have the right enforcement, you have the right sandbox so that you are able to run the agent in, in a secure way. Um, Make sure you have the right observability so that you know at real time or near real time how good your agent is performing. And if there are some anomalies, you can go and quickly fine tune it. So um, just as I said, we open sourced our um, safety and security solutions. Um, it's called page.ai. Uh, security and, and compliance is a pretty vast field. I don't think any single company can do it. Uh, so we are looking for design partners and contributors who can help us in our journey. So if you're interested, please reach out to uh, me at boss.page.ai or connect me in LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you.